Hello everyone, Quickster14 here coming at you with a video tutorial uh, for StarCraft 2 editor, beta editor, uh, right now, so if things look a little different from your editor, that is why, but most of this should stay intact. What we're looking at here is uh, being able to add periodic resources uh, using just data. Uh, beforehand, if anyone's ever done Warcraft 3 or even Star the original StarCraft, doing anything like of this nature had to be done with triggers and only could be done with triggers. Now, with the new data editor, editor and its power that we have, even though we're still learning how everything works, um, this can be done pretty easily. Uh, so, I'm going to show you how to do that. It's very simple how to do that. We're going to need primarily two things uh, a behavior and effect. You also might want a button if you want it to show up, uh, you know, so you actually have it over, like, whatever unit that's producing the uh, minerals or whatever. Uh, you don't have to do that, but it's something you can do. I'm just going to show you how to create the behavior and effect. Creating the button is pretty simple. So as you can see here, I've already created a passive resources. I have a couple, actually. Um, behaviors, and they're pointing to my effects. Uh, so uh, there's a lot to look at here, and this thing can be quite overridden, whether you're looking at table view or if you're looking at it at a uh, more conventional um, view, this view. It doesn't matter. I do have advanced on, so you may not see everything here. Um, if something's missing here that I, I modify, just turn it on. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and let's just uh, go through this real quick. We've created a new buff. This is the type we want for our behavior. This is a positive buff, though it doesn't really matter here, but if you want it to actually show up as a buff on the unit, whether it's green, red, or gray, will determine from this. Uh, buff flags, it, it don't need to worry about it. Categories don't need to worry about it. Modification, you don't need to worry about here. Um, it does some other things like, uh, uh, other things uh, that we really just don't need to worry about here. Player should be source, so make sure you change that to source. Damage response, you don't need to worry about. Cost, you don't need to worry about. Uh, effects periodic, we'll come back to that. Flags, if you don't want it to show up on the unit that it's on as a buff, uh, just click that and bring it up to hidden, and it will be hidden. Uh, this is a periodic effect, and we want it to happen every two seconds in this case, so we've set this to stats, period, two seconds, and that basically says, hey, I want this to happen every two seconds. Time scale source should be caster, because we want it to be done by the actual caster of the unit, not global. Uh, and then if you do want this as a buff, you can go ahead and set your icon here. If you don't, um, it'll be kind of blank. It'll be put with a default one, but I went ahead and put one here. So with that done, you can go to effects. You can see here I have a new uh, effect. You can create a new effect, periodic gas and minerals. I call this low. And this is doing both. Obviously, you can do um, one uh, type at a time, you could do multiple types at a time, uh, whether it's all four uh, mineral types or only one of them, or however you want to do it. You can even take away minerals, not give, so instead of giving, maybe it's taking away, something like that. So there's a lot of options here. The type that you want in order to do this is modify player effect type. That's, that's the key here to getting this to work. So as you can see, we have this set up. We created it. Um, when I gave it a nice name, an editor suffix saying it's low. Source should be player. Player, or sorry, effect player should be source. Again, this goes back to the uh, to the unit type, so very important. The resources uh, that you want to give or take away can go either way. So if you just wanted to, instead of giving five minerals, say I wanted to take away five minerals, it'd just be negative five. Okay. And again, you can do all four mineral types. You can give give them all, take away some, so let's say you wanted to do a convert, you could do that right here, and, um, or something like that. Uh, that has more going to cost, but you know, play around with it, have fun with it. Um, you get the basic idea. Validators uh, has to do with conditions in order for this effect to be true. So say there's an upgrade uh, that you want in order for this effect to happen uh, and, and, and usable. This really wouldn't go here, it would go more under the buff validator real quick, I'll show you where that's at. So, uh, that would actually go under requirements here. There's requirements. 
there, there's three different options requirements so let's say an upgrade or whatever validators disable it which is very straightforward basically uh, uh, if it's if if it returns false the behavior is going to be disabled and not usable uh, remove if one of the validators returns false the behavior will be removed from the unit so a lot of different things you can do with that but you get the idea so say you wanted to be an upgrade that's where you do it I need to hurry up here uh, so that's what happens. You set it up, get it done. Target marker, don't worry about that. Just leave it as it is. It's fine. And then you're really done. Just throw it on a unit as a behavior. Or, or make sure you're, sorry, make sure you link an event periodic to that, uh, to that buff you just made. Or that, uh, oh my god, all over the place. I'm sorry. To the effect you guys just made. So in this case, we made periodic gas and minerals low. All right, so that that's pretty simple. That's pretty done. I know I really did show here, just kind of going over it. I'll show it a little more in detail, maybe here in a minute. Just giving an example. This first part, I want to kind of get a summary in here and get through here. Uh, also, FYI, for those who see this, this map that I'm working on is my own Cannon Wars map. It's my map I'm working on. Uh, if you want to see more details about the map, what it does, what the events, what I'm doing with it, you know, stuff like that. Please check uh, future videos or current videos just about the Ion Cannon Wars map. These are just plain tutorials. Just quick F F F Y I. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that. So we have that all set. Everything is set. Everything is good. Very nice. So we have that now. I, I know one of you guys are saying, "Well, that's great and all, and that's nice. We don't have to do that for triggers." But what if I want floating text to show that I'm getting it? That's a good point. Say you didn't want the button to sit was there, you just wanted to show some sort of floating text. You'd be like, well, psh, I'll have to trigger something anyway. And actually, no. Uh, we found, a, in fact, I've just figured this out. We've found a, through actors that we can do different effect types that are actually seen, and one of them includes text. So as you can see here, I actually have a periodic floating text command center, uh, since that's where my thing is coming from, uh, that I've created here as an. Uh, as a basically it's a uh, text type I'll show you right here so it's a text actor type um, set it for not doodad set up my names all that good stuff and then you get all these different options this took a little while to figure out I pretty much figured out it on my own so I'm kinda proud of myself uh, first and foremost under hosting hosts make sure you change the subject type to alias unit uh, this basically is pointing at where this is coming from I don't know if it's horribly needed, but it, in order for the uh, text to to get positioned properly, it probably would help. Uh, I've set some filters, so self-ally, I'm not exactly sure what that is, I guess it doesn't seem to be doing much, uh, mainly for visibility, scale to host, whatever is being attached to or put towards, uh, fog visibility hidden, so you can't see it when it's fog, so like if it's an enemy or whatever. Uh, walkable height to to put it at the right spot at the beginning, and as you can see here, the actual UI. Uh, in this case, we have 28 font size, size three offset, so it's going to be three above the ground. Um, and then we actually have our text here. Let me turn. So it says plus five minerals, plus two vesping, because that's what we're giving. And I've actually scaled the text up just a little bit. Uh, inherited property is basically saying what you should inherit from the uh, unit. And in this case I want scale, scale variance, and visibility. Uh, and accept transfers, we want model, position, rotation status. Model really isn't important, but I went ahead and checked it anyway. And what makes it really work, because this will show it up and everything, but what, uh, what makes it work and gets it to show up and all this is our wonderful actor event here. And this is like, you're looking at it like, holy crap, oh my god. Um, I'm going to go over this best I can. I really can't just give you a summary of this. Um, when this first video is almost done so uh, we will go step by step because I've set this up and I still want to set up a couple more for some of the others I have for this specifically so in the next part here I'm going to have uh, basically going over how to create the behavior and effect that I went over and then how to create the floating text for for these so you can see how it's done and how to do other floating effects you're gonna find once you see this just how powerful this thing is. It's amazing and I've been having a lot of fun with it. The only problem I've had lately is trying to figure out a validator of getting it to show up. Um, I haven't quite figured that out yet 
Uh, I'll probably update my tutorial when I do figure that out more. I have something in place that hopefully will work. Um, so, but if any of you guys out there know how that's done properly on a validator, please, 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 please let me know in the comments. I'll be glad to hear. So, please stay tuned for part two. We'll actually go through this step by step, starting with the behavior and effect for creating your periodic resource, and then, of course, the actor for creating the floating text. So, see you in part two.